Karingai is unique in character, known by many as Sydney's green heart, but our community and natural environment are vulnerable to the effects of global warming and climate change. Our community has told us that they expect us to lead the charge in addressing climate change and indeed reducing our own footprint. Throughout the last 10 years, Council has focused its efforts on reducing emissions from key sources within its operations, primarily being fleet, buildings and street lighting. We've introduced a range of initiatives, include lighting upgrades, upgrades to our air conditioning systems, implementation of solar panels and smart building controls. We now purchase 30% of our energy from the Moree Solar Farm. We will scale that up to 100% from major solar and wind farms. In terms of fleet, the ultimate aim is zero emissions and to have the entire fleet powered by the wind and the sun. And we will continue to implement initiatives for low emission and electric vehicles to achieve this. By reducing emissions by 20% over the last 10 years, Council saves an average of $200,000 per annum, which it can reinvest in additional initiatives and actions that will go towards achieving the 2040 target. But moreover, we've been able to develop better programs for residents, schools and businesses so that they can implement the same type of initiatives and benefit from the environmental and cost savings themselves. Transitioning towards a net zero future comes with a lot of changes and a lot of opportunities. We get to speak to some of the community who are taking lead and pushing towards a net zero future for all of us. Hi, my name is Leanne. And I'm Eric. And we recently moved to a house last year in September, coming from a two bedroom apartment in the Lower North Shore. We have a young family, two boys, one of the first things we did was install a pretty large solar array on the roof. The house has got a really good aspect, so it gets a lot of good sun. We already had an electric car, so that really helped supplement that. I guess the more energy projects we then did was replace as much of the gas appliances as we could that mm. could use um, the clean energy we're producing. Um, mm. So we've got like a heat pump, a uh, hot water tank, yeah. um, and we're in the process of removing the gas stove as well. There were some initiatives that we did start doing back when we were living in the apartment. So that included composting, worm farming, just looking at what we were purchasing and consuming. Um, so we've been able to make some changes in terms of the way we buy things. So buying in bulk, um, buying from bulk food stores, going to farmers markets. We've been able to start a veggie patch as well. Um, and that's been a big thing to reduce our food mileage, um, be able to consume organic vegetable and also get our hands dirty in the garden, um, which has actually been quite fun. So have the two biggest producers of waste in the house are our two kids. And oh, yes. so what Leanne's done since the beginning is use, um, yeah, use reusable, reusable diapers. diapers. So that saves a lot of just garbage for printing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you don't have to, I think, do everything at once. I think it's good to to you know, work, to build on your green energy kind of design. It's really difficult to do it at once. Yeah, it doesn't need to feel like a big overwhelming project to take on. Yeah. Sudo Hair is a salon that I started eight years ago and now run with my partner Pablo. Yep. What you'll see uh, when you walk into our salon is lots of renewable, sustainable furniture that we have sourced uh, secondhand, uh, clients have given this to us. And over here to our right, you'll see our beautiful stock shelves, which I have sourced the shelves from on the side of the road. I've sourced them from secondhand stores. So as you can see over here, below our shelves are our gorgeous sustainable bins, which we take much pride in. We have a bin for hair, paper, plastic, and metals. The hair is really interesting because all the offcuts from hair, they go to multiple places, but the main place this goes to is to creating hair booms, which are placed in uh, ports around the country and made into hair booms. And what they do is they absorb oil spills. Then about 97, 98% of that oil can then be reused and recycled into machinery, which is pretty cool. The paper and the metals are then recycled together and sold. And what that does is that contributes to what we have contributed to, 118,000 meals for Oz Harvest which is a really cool thing. And then plastics uh, uh, turn into pellets and then repurposed for different things such as glasses, which is really cool. So we've got these LED down lights, which are quite energy efficient. We've also recently done the tinting on the windows and we've purposely left the top section of windows untinted to let as much natural light in as possible without the glare but it also helps with the energy efficiency and the not so much use of the air conditioner. 
Thanks for letting us show you around our little salon in Roseville. Well, we think it's really important to encourage our children and to teach them how to look after their planet and their, their environment. So we have a lot of environmental initiatives here at school. We have our chickens, we have composting, we've got our own school garden, and of course we've got this beautiful natural environment that the school is placed in. Here we're installing a 44 kilowatt system, which is a decent size. To put it in perspective, it would be enough to power about 10 homes. Currently that will avoid over 50 tonnes of annual carbon emissions, which is equivalent to taking about 19 cars off the road each year. The, the school has a loosely organised green team made up of students, teachers and parents. And this has triggered many of the environmental projects around the school. 